Hello, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich, Head of Investments for Esoteric Capital Markets. Today's topic is on the commercial real estate market. All right, so why are we highlighting that? Well, that's likely to be an area of concern very quickly. Right? It was an area that the Fed recently highlighted in some of their, their comments. Now, you might remember back in 2001, Alan Greenspan used the term irrational exuberance when he was talking about concern uh, with the equity valuations, right? With equity prices, with the run-up that we were seeing in equities. And we're starting to see verbiage out of the Fed today with uh, regarding their concern uh, with equity prices, all right? It's very unusual for the Fed to comment on, on, on valuations or, or uh, uh, prices in any particular asset class. But that's what we're seeing today. All right, and this language is pretty strong. Let's actually take a look at some of these. Chairman Powell. Chairman Powell said, in this is one of his direct quotes here, the economy still faces unprecedented risks. Right? In other words, we are not beyond the coronavirus. Right? We still have to worry uh, about the aftermath of this coronavirus. And for equities to have rebounded the way they have, the, the, the strength and the speed of the rebound is is a major concern to me, and it appears to be to uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman as well. All right, but it's not just equities in general. We also had the financial stability report uh, that was released on Friday afternoon. This is a report that comes out twice a year, and in this report, these are uh, these bottom two quotes are direct quotes here. They uh, said asset prices could suffer significant declines from here. Wow, that is strong language for the Fed. And they went on to specify not only asset prices in general, but possibly commercial real estate being among, amongst the hardest hit areas. Now, why is that? Well, the price of commercial uh, properties and farmland were richly valued, perhaps overvalued, going into the downturn going into the downturn. So if there were concerns with, with valuations going into the downs, downturn, obviously there's far more uh, concerns today. So let's be very clear here on, on what we're talking about when we talk about these commercial properties. These are uh, apartment complexes, all right, apartment buildings, complexes, whatever you want to call them. They're office buildings, um, retail centers, uh, department stores, hotels, you know, things of this nature. Okay, so what happens is is uh, uh, business uh, take, takes out a loan, takes out a mortgage, uh, right, for these facilities, and then those mortgages are pooled together. They're pooled together. And they're, they're sold as investment vehicles. It's, it's called CMBS. It's Commercial Mortgage Backed Securities. All right, so what are some of the concerns with these CMBSs? All right, one is overvaluations, right? That, that was highlighted in the, in the Fed report, in the Financial Stability Report. The valuations uh, were a concern before the slowdown. Now, that's not unusual. Valuations are always a concern in this area. Right? How much is an office building worth? Well, until we sell it, 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 it you know, the price discovery process is, is, is difficult. Right? If you're able to rent out all your office space and you, you know, with long-term leases um, at high rent rates, uh, you know, of course, uh, that, that can give you a very high valuation. But if those circumstances change, it could significantly change your valuation very quickly. So, there always uh, seems to be a valuation concern in this space, but particularly now, right? Now, in addition to that, these are also uh, generally very highly levered uh, borrowers, right? So we're starting with a potentially overvalued asset class and highly levered borrowers, Right. This was the cocktail that we were presented before the slowdown, folks. Remember that, before the slowdown. Okay, so that's two of the issues. 
Now, let's get down here. The credit rating is also a concern. The credit rating. Now, we, we saw this back in 2008, all right? Uh, but it wasn't with commercial mortgages so much back then. It was with residential mortgages, right? Mortgages, uh, houses. And what happens there is, is you can take a bunch of uh, individual um, residential mortgages and put them together. All right, and why do they do that? Well, the individual mortgages may not qualify and often do not qualify for, for a triple A credit rating. But when you put them all together, the idea is that the, the uh, credit risk diversifies, right? The default risk uh, uh, can diversify by pulling these together. And, you know, as we saw in 2008, a lot of these triple A rated residential mortgage uh, pools uh, were in trouble uh, and, and didn't behave like triple A's uh, at all. Right. And the reason for that, again, is when you have a um, systemic event, like we did with housing in 2008, everything came down together. It didn't matter whether you pulled a bunch of mortgages together or not, uh, because, because everyone everywhere uh, w was largely affected. Right? We have that same issue going on here today with mortgage back uh, uh, securities. So there's questionable credit ratings. Uh, because the diversification or the perceived diversification when, when they were signing these credit ratings uh, now is going away, uh, uh, giving the um, uh, effects of the coronavirus. All right, now, if that's not enough, to add to these three, of course, we got this big spike in missed payments. All right, we, we have department stores uh, not paying their rents. Uh, we, we have individuals, uh, you know, in apartment complexes, uh, not able to pay their rents now and so forth. And that was true in March. It was true in a April. Uh, it's most likely going to be true in May uh, as well and possibly even longer. All right. So that's that's pretty uh, ugly background uh, background that we're dealing with here. So the question is, you know, has the market has the CMBS market been reflecting these risks? So let's take a look at that. Let's look at some of the evidence related to that. So here is an uh, index uh, uh, for CMBS. And what we're looking at here is the spread. It's called the option adjusted spread, or it's a, you know, just think of it as a credit spread uh, on these securities. Now you can see for about a year, a year prior to the slowdown, you were earning about 60 basis points as a credit premium, 0.6%, right? 60 basis points. And then, of course, we had the liquidity crisis or the financial crisis that followed the healthcare crisis. And this thing shot up to, well, let's call it 260, right? It went from 60 to 260. Now, since then, things have uh, leveled off a little bit here. They have improved. And you can see as of Friday, they were paying just over 160 basis points. Okay, so let's uh, talk about that improvement first. You know, why did things improve? Went from 260 over to 160 over. Well, of course, we had all these emergency Fed actions and, and, and all those uh, liquidity provisions have uh, had a, a positive effect, right? And, and risk, app at, risk appetite has improved. And, and uh, liquidity tensions have uh, lessened. So the risk premium on just about all asset classes has come back down. All right? And we're seeing that in the CMB, CMBS market as well. Now, I add to that, one of the Fed uh, liquidity windows is actually set up directly at uh, the CMBS market. And the way that works is uh, if you put up the C CMBS as collateral, if it's AAA CMBS, you can put it up as collateral and the Fed will give you a loan, a liquidity loan. All right, so one of the Fed facilities is, is for this market in particular. So that's another reason why we've seen the spreads come in, right? From 260 over to 160 uh, over. But the bigger question is, is this... Uh, or was this an, an appropriate market uh, reaction in the first place? It, the only way I know to answer that question is to look back in history. 
Let's look back at some previous uh, stressful times. Some previous uh, uh, liquidity dislocations and see how this market has acted in the past. That's probably going to give us uh, a good idea as to whether or not the, the market reaction this time is, is in line with, 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 with what should be appropriate. Okay, so all I'm going to do, uh, this is the exact same chart we were looking at before, but I'm just going to open up the window. So we're still looking at the credit spread here on CNBSs. All right. Here we're just looking at a 20-day moving average because I'm going to look uh, 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 not at the last year, right? The previous chart was just looking at the uh, previous year. But here I'm going to go back, back to 2008. And if I, if I use daily data in here, it would be extremely no, noisy. So I'm just looking at a 20-day moving average here. Okay, again, from 2008. And you can see where we're at today. All right, the market reaction due, due to the stressful event, and then it's recovered a bit. And compare this to history. All right, this period of time here in 2011, of course, that was the European debt concern. The European debt concern. You can see at that time, we were paying, uh, uh, CNBS was about 350, uh, 375 over at that time much wider, much wider than we're seeing today. And that was a European debt crisis. That had nothing to do or very little to do uh, with, with people missing their payments, uh, you know, with, with things that are directly affecting the CMBS market today. So this reaction to me seems very uh, unusual. It seems like we should have had a much starker reaction going on here. And of course, Back in 2008, you can see where we were paying, you know, 10, 11, 12, nearly 13% over, right? Not 260 over, but 1260 or, or, or so over at, at that time. All right. So when I look at that chart, I, I, I just scratch my head, All right? To me, this is a market that is not in no way, shape or form reflecting the risk uh, that seems to be in the marketplace today. The amount of missed payments and the effect that's going to have on, on, um, on these mortgage holders. Uh, again, even if we're only talking about three months, even if it's just March, April, May, and we all go back to work and everybody starts making payments and, 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 and uh, you know, the buildings are full and yada, yada, yada. Even in, in that environment, we've still seen a very muted effect. Now, you add to that, of course, uh, the Fed's concern and so forth. And this has all the makings uh, uh, to show some significant uh, price declines here in the very near future. So this is what I would characterize as a potential trimmer. Again, we've talked about this a lot in the past. The difference between an earthquake and a trimmer. What we saw in March, I don't think it was the earthquake. Right and and and, and Fed uh, the uh, um, the Fed quotes suggest that there's more stress to come. So March is likely to be a trimmer. The CMBS market is likely to be a trimmer. We already talked about uh, uh, the the oil crisis has already happened, right? With the negative forty dollar oil, and that's likely to give rise to an EM crisis, right? That's going to be another trimmer. The big Earthquake to worry about this time is a uh, uh, credit crisis, a corporate credit crisis, massive downgrades of uh, investment grade corporates, the loser investment grade status, and of course, uh, we'll have the tidal wave of bankruptcies coming at us. So let's keep our eye on this. The next uh, uh, tremor um, uh, very easily could be the commercial mortgage back um, uh, market. So, so keep your eye on those spreads and, and uh, stay tuned to the uh, daily post on LinkedIn because I'll, I'll update those for you as we go here. All right, so that's our message for today. I'm Don Rich. You've just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your beer be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.